Uh, welcome, Sarada. Taking over the rad stream today. We're chatting with Sparklight. I've been super pumped about this conversation because, again, I'm very bullish on the ability to do complex math in bubble with a Sparklight endpoint. Uh, so happy to have you both. Thank you so much for doing this, um, Sarab. Of course. Of All course. Right. It's a pleasure. And thank you so much, John, for having us. Uh, it's been amazing having your help for so long and being able to just chat with you about Bubble and Sparklight and obviously, you know, helping us build that community out there. It's It's been amazing. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, again... Thanks, thanks a ton. I think we'll just be starting in about, let's say, let's give it about like another three, four minutes. Um, but yeah, uh, it's been really amazing. I think I've just joined the team recently. I think here we today have Sadha, who's the product manager for Sparklight. Uh, she'll be doing a whole bunch of the demoing in terms of what, what you can do with Sparklight, giving you a quick intro as well. Um, and I've just recently joined in as the community manager. And of course, uh, we have you, John, uh, two streams we have taken over for uh, hopefully for the next hour, maybe maybe a little bit more. And uh, yeah, I see, I think, uh, I think looking at everything that you've built so far, looking at, I think, some of the cool use cases and, and a couple other challenges you've shared, it just made sense to sort of get on here and talk to you about a couple of these things, probably share something more with your audience as well. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm still the the use case. I've had the use case in the past, right, where I could have used yeah. something like Sparklight, and the the you know it, it's work to go back and undo what I did in the past, just because I you know I've already done it. But now it's kind of like a new approach, right? Like it's it's another option that I have when I when I come across, and I actually have a couple of different examples that I haven't even shared with you guys yet. Uh, I it just occurred to me, kind of like. Yeah few minutes before the stream that right. th there are other places where this would have been applicable thinking back to the different, you know, use cases I, I would have done in it. And I want to show you that. So to see if like, you know, kind of give you some, some feedback on the different things that I could have used this for, you know, of course you're looking for user feedback and the different use cases where Sparklight can be implemented. So we're going to have a chat through that too. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. You bet. You bet. I think, um, Something, I mean, you know, while we're waiting, I think our audiences are just joining in. I guess you can see the stats. We still can't, but that's fine. Um, while the audience is joining, I'm a little curious, and maybe that's because I'm, I'm, I'm still new to the team. How did you find out about this? Like, where did you get to know about Sparklight? Uh, I'm, I don't think I've, you've had that conversation before. No, no. Jason Chen. Jason Chen. He reached God, out, to, yeah, he reached out no. to me on LinkedIn, and he said, hey, John, I know you're a bubble developer. Uh, check this out. And at first, when we were first out. having the conversation, yeah, I didn't, I didn't even understand what it was yet. And it took about maybe uh, uh, ten or fifteen yeah. minutes of him explaining it to me. It's like, no, 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 you can change the this spreadsheet. Like, first off, are you familiar with Excel? And I was like, yeah, I used it a lot in my <laughs> in my previous previous job. Uh, and would you like to use like the formulas in Excel in Bubble? And I'm like, hell yes, that is exactly what right. I want to do. Right. And I and I haven't found an easy way. And some someone did point out on Twitter the other day that there are other other solutions that do that turn an Excel spreadsheet into right. an Excel. But I think Sparklight yeah. is the first first option that is specifically building it for bubble users, which is why I think this is you know going to be so valuable for us uh, as we build this out in the future. Of course, That's awesome. Of course. Because I mean, um, you know, while. I remember when we were building Sparklight and, you know, that that took a lot of brainstorming, obviously, as any product does. Right. And our challenge was, who do we find out there who can take this? And then John Mello suddenly magically appeared and just solved all our problems. <laughs> Magic. And it was amazing because I, 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 I mean, I remember the day Jason told us about you and, you know, your YouTube stream about Sparklight. And it was the first thing we all saw in the morning at work. And we were like, wow, oh, my God, it, it finally happened. You know, and that was like our right. break into the market. It was amazing. So, yeah, that's Fingers awesome. Back. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. Right. Yeah, I think I think. 
Yeah, I think now's the best time. Let's dive right in. It's a, a little, it's just about five minutes in the stream. So I figure, you know, we can, we can get started. So for people who have just joined in or have been on the stream patiently listening to us babble, um, so today we'll be chatting a lot more about, you know, how you can power your more complex creative applications on, let's say, your bubble uh, platform using Sparklight, right? Um, and also, while well, a quick intro was shared earlier, this is just a reiteration. We have Sadna, uh, who's the product manager from Sparklight, joining in with this today. There she is. Waiting. Um, I am the community manager at Sparklight, uh, who just recently joined in. And of course, we have John Mello. You know him. It's his channels uh, who essentially take care of all things bubble for us. Right. Um, okay. Um, and with that in mind, uh, let's see if we dive into the agenda for today. So what we'll do is we'll just quickly, of course, go through and give you a quick intro on Sparkline. You know, most of you don't really as much care because you must have seen this already. But And, and more importantly, we'll, we'll jump into the active building session. Essentially, Sadhana will take us through setting up the spreadsheet, creating and testing your APIs on the Sparkline platform. And and, and then pass this along to John, who'll take care of things on Bubble, essentially showing you the app, setting it up there, of course, using the API, uh, Sparklet API on Bubble itself. Uh, we'll try and cover that as fast as we can because the core of the conversation will happen with our fireside chat that we have set up with John today. And uh, in the interim, if at all any of you find and feel like you have more questions to ask, I have a set of questions that I have as well, which you know I'm, I'm looking forward to ask. But please feel free to ask uh, any questions you can have in terms of why they're using Sparklight, so how, the, how, how does it make sense? Do uh, you want to ask something to John on Bubble side? How do we integrate either of these things? Feel free to just drop those in the comments and we'll try and pick them either in between or by the end. Uh, one last thing, of course, there's a very nice activity in place if, in case you're looking to get some merch out of this conversation. You still have a way to go uh, to make that happen as well. So, Without further ado, go for it, John. Yeah. Uh, just to call out some housekeeping, one housekeeping thing before you start, Sadna. Uh, if you are trying to join the stream, it looks like the, I think maybe the restream link was shared. Uh, but if you are viewing this, watch it on YouTube and add your comments there. Uh, because that's, yeah. that's what we're going to be monitoring the chat from YouTube and LinkedIn. Uh, I just put the link into the into the comment section into the chat here. So watch the YouTube version of this there. Perfect. Yes. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And yes, yeah, Savna, over to you, please. Uh, awesome. I think we can start with the intro part. So, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. So. Just want to welcome everyone who's taken the time to join us today and anybody who's joining us um, from the first webinar. Thank you for coming again. Um, you know, our first webinar was a massive success. We had some great members joining. And for the second one, uh, again, very thankful for John for helping us out. Um, he's a renowned bubble coach. He's been building bubble apps for a long time now. And we are super glad to have him try Sparklight out. Um, of course, we just launched our official bubble plugin, uh, which took a lot of hard work and the team has been working very hard on it. So um, definitely love would love everyone to try it out. Um, just going to introduce what we're going to be doing today. So as Sara mentioned, um, I'll just take you guys around some of you know the introduction of what Sparklight is. We'll talk a little bit of spreadsheeting. And then John will take over from the API side and dive into the bubble land, right? Um, for those of you all uh, who have not heard of Sparklight yet or who didn't join our first webinar, Sparklight is this magical tool that can convert all your logic in a spreadsheet into an API. And that API can be connected to no-code tools out there like Bubble. Um, there's a lot more out there like Retool and um, AirDev. There is uh, Retool. Uh, there's Flutterflow. There is there's AppSheet and all of Right, streamlit, of course. Um, so yeah. today we're going to be talking about Bubble, and let me just quickly share my screen. Um, and yes, please let me know when you can see it. All right, so okay, we, we have your screen. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So um, this is what Sparklight looks like, right? And when you go to our website, you 
you'll be able to see what Spotlight can do, all of our USPs. And right here is our sign up button. You can sign up. And you are ready to log in. And once you log in, um, you will very well enter our dashboard. Now, this uh, is where all our. Sorry. Sorry. It's a little blurry. So Quick I interaction. Yeah. Yeah, I think for some reason the the screen is a tad blurry. Yeah, let me uh, if, hang on. Let, let me share. Me, yes. All right, let me let me try sharing that again, and then you can let me know. Minor technical difficulties, people. Don't worry, this happens. We prepared for this. Oh, perfect. Well, that was that was oh. mine. <laughs> I want to make sure we get started. Oh. Oh. Let's try that again. Okay, just one quick moment there. Oh, uh, awesome. I think it's it, well that, that happens essentially a little bit of uh, technical difficulties. It generally happens when you want to share, and if you're doing it for the very first time, it's essentially that you know you'd have to like restart your browser to be able to make that happen. Mm. Sadna's back. All right, I'm back. I just uh, refreshed my screen to kind of see if that works. Um, but I am sharing again, and let me know if that works. Oh yeah, much Perfect. better. Awesome. Okay, perfect. So, um, yeah, I was just saying that once you do end up uh, signing into Sparklight, you will end up on our professional dashboard. And just by the way, if you do sign up, you will be put on our professional plan for 14 days for free. You don't have to give us your credit card. Um, yeah, just go ahead and sign up create a spreadsheet and upload it. So we're going to go ahead and try and create a new API. Um, now, in order to create that API, you have to start with preparing your spreadsheet. So I'm just going to open this file that I quickly made, right? Um, it's a simple spreadsheet, but what we really care about is the calculation that it's running. Now, if you see here, I've got a few sales amount. Now, in an ideal case, you probably have a sales um, you know, tool that's calculating all your data, and then you download it as a spreadsheet, okay? Assume that. And what I'm doing here is I'm using the very versatile quartile function on a spreadsheet. This is available on Excel as well as Google Sheets. And what it does is it breaks apart your data into specific uh, groups, and then it calculates the percentage. So for example, what I've done here is I've taken this entire data and I'm calculating the first 25%, so quartile one, and the first 75%, which is quartile three for it. Um, now, it's a simple logic. Of course, it can be as complex as you'd like. For the sake of this demo, uh, we've chosen to kind of just simplify it a little bit. Now, yes, I have my spreadsheet, but we have to make Sparklight understand what this spreadsheet is. And for that to be able to happen, we use something, we use a term called mapping. So you basically select your inputs, you name them as your inputs for Sparklight to understand. And then similarly, you pick your outputs and name them as outputs. And the way to do that is basically you use name ranges on a spreadsheet. So we're going to go ahead and try and name it. The way to do that is you select the cell, go to the formulas tab, name manager and then we create a new name so we're just simply naming the cell and for sparklight to understand that this is an input we have to use a particular syntax that syntax is simply x input underscore now that prefix is necessary for sparklight to understand yes this cell is an input cell and then beyond this you can call it anything so for the sake of this demo i'm just going to call it one and press ok so my input is set. And to confirm, you can look on the top left corner here. It's called an input. There's another way to do it, and it's much simpler. To select your cell, go to the corner, and just type x input underscore name. I'm just going to call it two. So that's it. Very simple. You just keep repeating it for, uh, for your inputs and outputs. It works for single cells. It works for full tables. Yeah, I want to just named pull out, Sadna, that I, I've been working with it. Like in my, in my past career, I guess you could call it. I, I, I was using Excel pretty heavily. We did, we were doing like compensation analysis and yeah. I never knew that you could rename the cell like that. So I learned that from <laughs> working, like trying to build the API or the endpoint in Sparklight. So thank you for teaching me this. Now, of course, I mean, in most cases, working on a spreadsheet is an art. I mean, for people who really work on spreadsheets, they don't use mouse. They don't 
you know, it's 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 in their nerves. It's it's mentally blocked that you know you click on these keys and you get that. So there's a lot of simple things, simple hacks on Excel that you can learn. And you know, we're always here to help. So if you do get stuck, just contact us and we'll help you around. Um, yeah. So as I was saying, um, you know, map your inputs. In this case, I've just mapped them as X input one, two, three, four five and six. Now, similarly for outputs, the prefix is X output underscore, right? So um, if you notice here, I've selected this cell and I've called it X output underscore quarter one. Um, it's as simple as that. Of course, you have to build your spreadsheet and save it. Just to repeat myself, uh, what we did here is working on Sparklight begins with a spreadsheet. Um, you can do this on Excel. You can also do it on Google Sheets. If you use Google Sheets, just make sure you do the mapping on Google Sheets and then download it as an Excel file. We are working on a Google Sheet integration as well. So do watch out for that in our updates. Um, but either way, whatever spreadsheet you're using, download it as an Excel file, .xlsx, and then you can upload it to Sparklight. Um, by the way, if anybody has any questions so far, feel free to drop it on the chat and then we'll take it from there. Uh, yeah, don't forget to save your spreadsheet. And then if we just go back to Sparklight, what you have to do is just click next and we'll just go ahead and browse for our file and we can go ahead and upload it. Now, what's happening in this is it's simply converting all the logic that we had built on our spreadsheet into code. Usually this process takes a few months for any developer to do, right? Any company, especially when there are very complex formulas involved, it takes over months. And John, I'm sure, you know, you've worked with companies like this before, even Saurabh, um, it, it can get very, very hectic. So what Sparklight really does is that it eases that pain and, you know, your code is ready in a few seconds. So yeah, this is, this is what we get out of it. The API is ready and yeah, you get a little summary of what it's converted, how many cells were converted, what kind of, you know, how many inputs and outputs we have. And that is it. So, um, also a quick reminder, at the moment, um, our APIs are private if you're on the professional plan, and we require something called a bearer token to run the API. So if you're calling this API from your local tool, like John will show in just a bit on Bubble, you have to input that token on your API inside the no-go tool. And something that the product team is just testing out at the moment is to basically have these bearer tokens update every two hours for security purposes. Uh, we are trying different uh, ways to make that longer and have a more secure, uh, well, you know, well managed and longer running key so that you don't have to change it. But at the moment, every two hours, the key updates. So you have to manually go and change it. Um, but all in all, it's very secure. It's a quick process, hassle free. And um, yeah, that's that's all that I would like to talk about, you know, the spreadsheet side. Now, we're no longer going to talk about the spreadsheet. We move towards the API land. So, John, if you'd like to take the screen back. Yep. And there we go. About the API side of it. Let's do it. So basically what we're going to do now is take what Sadna just created and implement that into our bubble app. And the example that we're going to use today, I mentioned before that I had a use case in the past where I couldn't mm. calculate quartiles in an efficient way with nat either natively in bubble or with the various plugin options that there are to do math uh, in bubble. Right. So that's kind of the example that I'm going to show today. And again, like Sada said, throw your questions into the chat or things that you're experiencing. We'll be, we'll be monitoring that. And we'll address them, you know, before the stream is up, if, if they're not quick answers. Um, but here's, let's work backwards kind of from this angle. This is my dashboard. Uh, and say, for example, I have this chart on the bottom here of sales by day, All right? If I click this, I get a group focus that gives me the minimum, median, and maximum of this data set that's, be, that's populating this chart here. Right, so this is just a quick snapshot of that. What I don't have access to or the quartile data, right? And that's why we're gonna use that endpoint that Sadna just created in order to calculate those two values that we're missing. Very basic use case, simple, 
but very challenging to do, again, just with the options that are in bubble today without Sparklight. Um, so you can see, let's get into the bubble side of this just so you can see how this is set up, right? We've got a group focus here. And you have the expression here uh, is taking the data uh, that's populating this chart and then pulling in the minimum, right? And you can see here that these are the, uh, the math operations that core bubble offers max min median average product sum but there's no q1 or quartile or anything like that it doesn't exist all right so these are the ones that we're going to fill in using that endpoint that sadna just created all right so first step i'm going to go through the step by step here and again if you have questions let me know and i'll explain things that i might be glossing over uh so the first thing that we're going to do is add a plugin now, while I'm here in this in the plugin library, right? So first off, if you're interested in the Sparklight, we're, we're not going to use, we're going to do a direct API integration today, but the Sparklight plugin is out there and it makes this whole process a lot easier. Do check this out because you don't need to know as much about working with APIs if you're going to use the Sparklight plugin. But the interesting thing that I want to call out here is how many people are using the MathJS plugin. There's 20,000... <laughs> 20,388 installs on this MathJS local app. And it clearly says right here, this plugin is unmaintained and has, and has significant bugs. Similarly, I'm even using this one, this MathJS uh, plugin that it has eight over 8,000 installs. And I, if I have a problem with this, there's no real way for me to contact the plugin developer because I don't know who they are, right? So... Again, there's a clear need to do math in Bubble uh, that people are willing to install an unmaintained plugin that may produce wrong information. Uh, that that th and this is exactly what Sparklight is addressing. So, to these thirty thousand people that are doing this, again, myself included, I'm using the the MathJS this one in one of my apps. But these thirty thousand people that are doing this, twenty eight thousand, whatever. Um, Sparklight is a more reliable uh, option, in my opinion. All right, so with that, let's install the Bubble API connector. We have that. And again, we're going to do this manually today, just to show you the full breadth of what we're doing here with this endpoint. I'm going to just call this Sparklight. And we're going to add a shared header for both the authentication purposes. And we'll go, we, the, way, the way that we get that info is we're going to go back to Sparklight here. We're going to go to see API details. And I'm going to Let's scroll down, go. integration yeah. guides, and we're going to use bubble. All right, again, the plugin option is there. We're going to integrate with Bubble manually. All right, I'm just going to copy these over, these headers. Content type application. Uh, Go ahead. Just uh, a quick so. heads up for everybody. Yeah, just a quick heads up for folks. It's always helpful to just copy paste as opposed to type, no matter how fast you can type. It just helps. Um, if you copy paste this information, so there's no typos, there's nothing missing, and just everything gets seamlessly added here. So, yeah. Agreed. And Sadna also mentioned before that the bear token needs to be refreshed at the moment. Again, we'll, their Sparklight's kind of working through that. Um, but this yeah. is where you would access the the bear token if you need to refresh it. Uh, so I, I assume, Perfect, yeah. I assume, Sarah, this is going to this bear token changes every two hours, right? The value that's in yes. this input here. Okay, got you. Yeah. So a quick heads up there. So either if you it happens every two hours, or the moment you log out and you log back in, it actually changes then too. So basically, anytime you see an error showing up on your app, or just have it in your back of your head, um, if you're logging off, logging back in, and under two hours, just come back in copy it and temporarily just paste it until we have a better fix in place yeah yeah that is a it is a pain point for some people so just call that out i, I yeah. realize that that can get annoying uh what you can do as yeah. an alternative until they you know we sort this out is just make if if the data that you're passing through the endpoint is not sensitive i've just made all these these endpoints public because i'm just passing numbers through them they're not it's nothing that nothing sensitive that i would want to protect 
Um, all right. So then what it does is Sparklight generates the the um, the payload or the JSON body that we're going to use to send these inputs. Again, right, Sadna showed us those six inputs that were on the spreadsheet. Those have been translated into inputs or the parameters that we're going to use to pass into the endpoint. So I'm going to just very easily copy this, paste it into our first endpoint here. And I'll change this to quartiles. And I think, uh, what did I forget to mention here? That it is a, what does it say? It's a post method. Yeah. So you just go up all the way up and you should see a link. That's the endpoint and that's the post method. Perfect. Gotcha. Okay. Forgot that part. All right. So okay. actually, for, first what I'll do is copy the endpoint itself and paste that into here. Nope, I actually put, put, copy the JSON body. Let's copy this again. And I'm gonna change this to a post method, which should open up the body here. Now what I can do is copy the body and paste that into the request here, or the, the payload. All right, now, if you if you've worked with endpoints in bubble before you'll know that you need to use these uh how did we call them again what was the word so we chevrons. Call them chevrons chevrons we're going to use these <laughs> chevrons triangle brackets Not right <laughs> less than greater than and, and for folks who are still sort of a bit uh, curious and are a bit skeptical. And of course, when I started with APIs, I was terribly scared. Like what, what these are, like what is JSON payload? What is a post request? Um, all of these things are, are very, I would say, you don't have to know how to code really. You don't really have to sort of go through the whole spiel of knowing it all. It's mostly understanding how APIs work in general. But if you don't, let's say if you don't really fully know it and, and, and have a good clarity, Feel free to reach out to us. We are more than happy, or you can watch this video, of course, um, share it with your peeps. But if not, just feel free to reach out to us. We are more than happy to sort of run you through these couple of things uh, step by step, and of course, get your inputs along the way. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's why we're doing this today, really going step by step, as opposed to just using the plugin, which again makes this like probably ninety percent easier. Yeah. Uh, it's just that we want everyone to see if you even if you're not familiar with endpoints, how this works and how quickly this can work. Uh, if you're, you know, if you have an interest in learning the, uh, how to connect directly with an API. And this is, this is something that you're, you're going to not just for math, but you're probably, if you're building a modern app, you are probably going to need more than one integration. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't think of almost any use case that I've done that didn't involve at least one third party that I needed to integrate with. So a knowledge of APIs is kind of essential if you're building apps in this, in this day and age. Uh, but yeah, this is this is exactly how to do it. I think it's also demystifies the process of setting up an API a little bit, right? Like yeah. it's not as bad as people as people think. <laughs> it's just scary True. because it's a lot of like technical technical jargon to it. Right. Um, all right. So what I did here is made these values dynamic, and these keys are what we're going to see throughout the application where Bubble is expecting these inputs. So I've assign the value to them and we're going to use these values just to initialize the call. You'll notice a private checkbox here on the right side. Be mindful that you just need to uncheck these if you want to pass dynamic values into this input, which is what we're going to do today. And just to show an example of that, I'm only going to uncheck two uh, so we can see where that becomes a problem. All right. So with this, we should be able to initialize this call and successfully connect to our Sparklight endpoint. And boom, we got it. All right. So this is what a successful API call looks like in Bubble. This is when you've connected successfully. It's going to add, it's going to show you all of the columns that came back in that response, and then it's going to you have the option to kind of say how to handle this. Bubble makes assumptions based on the initial value, but you can also if this is wrong, if this say came up as a text, we could change this to a number, and then Bubble will now treat that field as a number. All right. So you can see we even got the Q1 and Q3, quartile one and quartile three of that data set that I put in here. All right. 
So now what we're going to do is switch over into the workflow tab to see what we're connected, but we haven't actually set this up to actually display it to the user on the front end. So let's take that next step. Now we're going to go tab over to workflow and the events do that I, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Question. I think, uh, do we have to change, I think the data with actions or is does, does that come a little later? Ah, uh, you, you are sharp, my friend. Yes, exactly. I forgot to do that. So that wouldn't have showed up. And let me actually show an example of why that's important. So Rob makes a very good okay. observation here. Uh, so if we do the, the trigger, the event that we're going to use is when the page is loaded, it's going to call the Sparklight Fine. API. So now if I go down to plugins now, you can see I don't have any options here. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's exactly for the reason that Saurabh pointed out. We didn't set this as an action. We have it as data, which you can use again in a different way. It's still connected. But if we want this to be triggered by a workflow, then you need to set it as an action. So now if I go back to my workflow tab, click here to add an action, plugins. Maybe I need to reinitialize it. Probably. One thing that scares me with Bubble is there's no save button here, which is like, <laughs> I'm a little skeptical. Did it actually save the settings or, uh, yeah, I think it's maybe, yeah, can you initialize? Yeah, yeah, you have to reinitialize the call. Yeah, that's ah, interesting. Perfect. Uh, all right, so now if we go down to plugins, no, it's still not there. Why is it not there? Um, At this stage, I just refresh, like, hope that it yeah, is. It shows let's, up. Let's see what that's about. Yeah, I think it might just be a case of the browser cache. Yeah, yeah. It's normally that would produce. That. Uh... It's interesting. We though, live, we only, learn. Yeah, only when you like actually dive deep within your apps, you kind of really understand how far you can stretch it. But um, yeah, I mean, either ways, I think. Wow, they're really it? playing hard to get. What am I missing <laughs> here? All right, let me, let's take, whoa, uh, what happened? No, it's gone. Magic. What happened to my endpoint? <laughs> it, it completely uninstalled, right. it completely uninstalled the API connector. That is, I've never we're, seen we're that happen before. Uh, I, I always say technology has a mind of its own and I feel like it's finally happening. Dude, uh, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it saved, it actually it saved, saved it. yeah, but I've never yeah. seen that happen where it totally uninstalls the plugin. That's very strange. This is not nothing to do with spoiler. This is a bubble thing. Uh, but <laughs> let's see, let's see if that fixes what happened. Action, All right? We've got action, workflow, plugins. There we go. Oh. Sparklight core tiles. What the hell was that? I have no idea, <laughs> people, uh, but it's, it's back. We'll fix that in post-production. Don't worry. We got that. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it in. It, it shows the uh, it, it shows the kind of debugging process that you have to deal with on a daily basis when you're yeah. really working this stuff live. Um, all right. Um, if now you can see that we only have two inputs here, right? The two and the four, and these can be dynamic values, but and just to kind of point back to the reason that we're only seeing two inputs instead of six here is because I didn't uncheck the private checkbox here. So that is another kind of just thing to watch out for. I've done that many times in the past, not realizing why the the parameters are not opening up. Uh, and then you see, as soon as you do that, those become available, right? And it'll default to the number that you initialize the API call with. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to pull the information that's populating from that uh, chart, right? So we're gonna get, we're gonna do Again, this is just kind of, we're working with dummy data here from uh, the Atomic Fusion plugin. Right. This would normally but come, yeah. this this information would yeah. normally come from your database in all likelihood, but just for simplicity today, we're doing this from the, uh, the Atomic Fusion plugin. So we're going to say yeah. the dashboard, the sales amount, and then we're going to use the first item. Perfect. So this is our yeah. data set that we're going to... Go ahead, yeah. it's, it's quite interesting. I think one of the things, I, uh, and maybe it's just in my head, I figured it would be sequential, like body one, three on top, and five, six, two, four. I guess, I guess is that because you unchecked those options later in the process? Because um, generally, yeah. 
Yeah, I think the sequence is something that that might play, might have some role. Uh, maybe for yeah. folks who are building this for themselves, just be a little bit more careful in terms of the input that you have on the left versus the data that's going in dynamically. Yeah, it's actually cool. interesting. Oh, because you're pointing out because it's not in like order here, right? It's yeah. one, three, five. Yeah. yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to try to match these up. So four, two, yeah. this will be six. I don't know that it really it matters. Would have taken me, yeah, it would have taken me a long time to figure this out. Like, it's, it's, not, it's you know, the bubble ecosystem so well that you're able to copy paste your way through this so efficiently. It would have taken me a while um to to make that happen so yeah i'm using i'm definitely using a lot of shortcuts here um but again if it's like you know something you can get it's something as as you use bubble and more and more you just kind of get used to these little shortcuts that may cut your dev time in half um but honestly like right. there's always surprises right like i didn't even think of this like the way the order in which we uncheck those text boxes is how it shows up here right that's very strange uh, but, and I don't think that it matters because the data is all going to one place uh, and Excel mm -hmm. is sorting that to calculate the quartile. So this really doesn't matter. I could have put number two in bot in input number three here. I don't think that would matter. We'd still get the same result. Gotcha. gotcha. Um, okay. So the second, now that we have, we have the Sparklight uh, API call in our workflow, the next step is to send that to the bubble front end in order to display it to the users. So what we're going to use is another concept. Again, that's a little bit, if you're not too familiar with bubble, it's a little bit involved. Uh, we're going to use a custom state in order to hold this number value. So I'm going to add two custom states. And what a custom state is for those of you that don't know, is just a, it's a value that you assign to an element, right? It could be a number. It could be a text, it could be a database object, right? It could really be anything that you store temporarily on the front end in order to do some kind of manipulation or display with. Uh, very handy, very common to use custom states in Bubble. All right, so we'll very simply call this Q1 and we're gonna set it to a number. And we're also gonna do that for Q3, quartile three. And we're gonna set that to a number. There we go. Okay. All right. And now what we could do is go back to our workflow. And I just also want to point out as kind of a bubble best practice. Uh, it's always best to put your custom states on the page itself. You can really put, you can put a custom state on any element, right? Like I can put it here, uh, but it's easy to lose track of them. And you can, regardless of what element it's actually saved on, you can refer to that with, a, with an expression in bubble. So you don't have to put the custom state on the element that you are, you know, trying to manipulate. It's best to keep it at the page level just for simplicity in, in development. Hmm. Interesting. It's, it's a nice to see you toggle between these tools with such ease. I would always be scared. Have I saved it? Have I saved my uh, input there versus but is it is going to be? You know what's good about Bubble is that most of the time it auto saves. So mm -hmm. at, at, least, at least that's how I work on Bubble. I mean, I don't even think about saving it. Sometimes I go like, oh, command S, command S, but then that ends up saving the entire web page. I'm like, never mind. Yeah. Like, that's no yeah. point, right? But that's the good thing about all these new age tools that it just, it just does the job for you. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. like Sparklight does. So, <laughs> I just have to say that. <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, yeah, you're absolutely right. The um, the if you're seeing saved up here, then your you, the work that you're work the work that you're doing is being saved. If if not, it'll say like timeout or something there, and you want to just refresh the browser because Bubble stops saving. The only point where you do want to create save points. Uh, this is again just kind of going into like best practices and building here is like when you 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 say you've gotten something done that you were working on for a long time and you're just like all right i want to be able to reference that point where i got this working or i got this page looking a certain way like responsive down right. to mobile size you can say okay like atomify atomify page done something like that and then you mm. save that and now you have a record that you can go back to if you ever need to in your history right revert to this time and truthfully you can go back it 
to any point in the development history down to the minute, depending on what plan you're on, or down to the second, rather. Uh, but it, again, it's hard to know like what you, why that save point was important mm. if you don't have this. Right. Gotcha. All right. So let's finish up the last part of this. We're almost done um, with the with this uh, with this part. We're going to say here, spark light quartiles, and then the next step is going to be to set the state on this act on this element. We're going to use the index, which is just our page, right? Again, setting the states at the page level. And we're going to set two states, custom state one, and then we're going to set another state three. And the value is going to come from the result of step one's response data output Q1 for this. And then you can copy this expression mm -hmm. down so we don't have to build the thing again. Again, just saving time. And that'll be Q3. All right. So now when we go back to the front end, we're going to go to our our uh, group Where? focus yeah. okay. and we're going to put indexes again this is referencing the custom state indexes q1 and indexes q3 and this is the the element that's actually going to display this to the user on the front end yeah. q3 all right now when we load the page drum rolls uh, yeah, they should have this feature right. on the stream. Like that should be some music or something. Cool. <laughs> I know, right? We need some sound effects. All right, so this is, the page there's is loaded. Things. Now, when we check our mm -hmm. our uh, group focus here, you can see that we've now got the min, median, max, and our Q1 and Q3 quartiles are being calculated from the Sparklight API, and this is proper math being done in your Bubble app. I love this. Uh, there's there's a ton of different use cases for this, uh, and especially if you are having trouble in math, this is the type of stuff that you want. The first approach, I would say, that you want to consider uh, in getting some math done. Well, um, that that was go go, John. Sorry. No, no, I'm done. I'm done. That was it. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks. Well, this is this is exactly what I think we were, we were all waiting for and hoping to see, right? I think being able to do, though it may seem, I think for the most part, I think in the audience's people, you might be wondering, okay, but it's just quartiles. Isn't that that simple? I think the question then becomes really for people who are trying to have this solved within their applications. Bubble happens to be in front of us today, uh, but wherever you are and wanting to be able to do, get your spreadsheet logic back inside your application that you're building, um, if you have a way to convert that formulas and functions into your API without you actually having to code, Sparklight is your tool, right? Like that's as simple as that. So thanks a ton for sharing the entire build experience. And also thanks to Sadna for giving such an amazing demo. It looks, I mean, she's, she's experiencing a little bit of, I think, a bit of chills and a little bit of allergy today, <laughs> but she's been able to manage it and give us such an amazing demo there. So thanks. Thank you so much. Let's, having said that, having, you know, gone through the entire build process, I'm sure a lot of you folks have questions, uh, but since we are moderating, we get to go first. No, I'm just okay. Feel free to share any questions. We'll put your questions up as well, and you'll get to ask them too. Um, I have a question for John already. I have a couple of questions for John. Um, and, and this is something we are all curious, I think, internally. I'm, I'm, I'm sure externally people are very curious as well. Um, so, John, tell me, I mean, what didn't work the way you wanted, right, in Sparklight, potentially, when using in Bubble, perhaps outside of Bubble? What didn't work the way you wanted it to work? Sure. So, I, I think that there's not a lot that didn't work the way that I would want it to. It's almost like the next iteration of Sparklight and what I would like to see and what I think would be useful for Bubblers is mm. the ability. So, you saw in our use case, we added the the inputs individually right so we need, right. would have mean to need to have known how many inputs or numbers right. were going to be in that data set whereas in reality right. there's going to be a lot of use cases where the num that number yeah. is going to be dynamic right so yeah. the ability to pass a dynamic list of numbers into the api endpoint and have spark like calculate that as an array yeah. Um, yeah. is going to be very valuable because then you can take that information and populate like chart data uh, a little bit more easier. You could still populate charts with data that's coming from Sparklight, 
but right. it, it could be easier to do uh, without having to have a finite number of inputs uh, in, in, gotcha. in Excel. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I completely agree with you, John. Um, you know, like you said, modern day apps uh, can get quite complex. And that's the problem we want to solve, right? So appreciate that feedback. And um, I, I have to say, even in the last webinar, when I was trying to build that pie chart for the EMI calculator, I found it a little bit tough because I was like, well, you know, it's 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 not something that Bubble natively um, allows for. So you have to try different plugins and you have to try this and you kind of have to do like a mixture of a lot of things to get what you actually wanted. Um, but in the end, I was able to figure out. So like just from a product perspective, right, I'm thinking maybe we just go out there and build on top of the Bubble plugin that we already have. Um, maybe we can put the link of the plugin on the chat, right? But um, the idea is that we want to obviously keep improving for the people. And this is a great example of what we should, we will be yeah. working on. So um, yeah, definitely agree with you on that. There is a demo for the Sparklight plugin. I just dropped a, uh, a YouTube link in the chat. Wow. Uh, yes. Do check out the plugin. Again, it does make this process easier. Um, right. What, in addition to that, like, so I, the use cases that I see kind of happening are going to be very, like a lot of financial. Obviously, there's a lot of fintech apps out there uh, that I think can leverage endpoints to do calculations uh, to make their lives easier real estate applications, I think, anything that involves any kind of calculation or tracking changes over time, I feel like this could this could potentially have an application for. I got to say, stop saying application because we use <laughs> have a use case for, I guess, is a better way to say it. Yeah, yeah, anything that's program pro you know, programmatically accessible in that regard, that's, that's great. I'm gonna probably just quickly wait um, Probably another quick two seconds if people are sending in chat maybe john would like to highlight those chat on the on the screen as well but let's just quickly wait give them a half second there feel free to get those questions coming but if not i've got another one for yeah john, ben, I think. Um, ben if you're if you're on ben ask your questions around the authentication problems you were having i know you had some questions there and you're working through them so drop them in the chat we're, we're looking at them yeah it, we can bring up those as well in case those questions are something that we can share with, with everybody. Uh, yeah, and that's for you, John, in case we can bring up. That would be great. Um, but alternatively, I think, you know, the, the other question that I had was like, you know, if you could have like one new feature, you know, what would that be? And I, I will remind you, we have a product manager with us in this call. So there are very uh, All right. other product managers listening in as well. Um, so, you know, feel free, feel free to share um, uh, along those lines as well. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, the, yeah, I think, well, kind of, first off, the, 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 what I just kind of said before is, is, pro is a feature, I guess, I would like to see. But I think also kind of taking it to the next step too, not just math, but also graphical representations of the data that's coming back from Bubble. So like the, gotcha. the charting plugins, yeah. there, there's two main charting plugins for Bubble. There's Apex Charts and Tech Blocks. Those are the ones that everybody mm -hmm. uses and, and knows. Um, and right. they, they work great, right? or maybe chart.js too. And they work great, but it's you still need to massage the data in such a way that's like painful sometimes to get it to populate the way that you want it to. So if Sparklight yeah. is taking that that math, that uh, the, the great you know like the, the math that it's doing, and then there's the the like the plugin also offers graphs <laughs> to it. That right. would be such a usable thing that people would pay for. Uh, so that would be my suggestion on, you know, the kind of the roadmap of the direction that Sparklight should go in. I think that's yeah. wonderful. I mean, um, at least from the perspective of the product team, of course, we have a lot of people in this as well, right? But um, I, I think charting is the way to go. Like a lot of people want to represent their data and it's not just data, right? There's, you could be connecting to multiple sources on your app, like you said, uh, modern day app has to be is connected to a lot of different APIs as a lot of different integrations. So um, I think showcasing that as visuals um, is the next thing to do. And yeah, I mean, we'll just keep building on top of our plugin on bubble, honestly. <laughs> yeah. And right. again, 
yeah. again for anyone that's you know having experiencing issues today just remember this is very new right like this this the these bubble just announced the um the the plugin with sparklight um yeah. it's not it, it's we're, it's still being tested on the best you know features to build out what's going to be the most useful for bubblers and there's you know honestly it's not just bubblers there's more there's more you know people who are interested in something like this yeah. um but just because it isn't isn't doing what you think it should do today don't write it off as something that isn't going to be useful down the line um in the and, same way that know, people think about bubble right like bubble people will talk about bubble like oh it doesn't do this but yeah but you know that's today right who knows what's going to yeah. happen in the next year the exactly. next six months the next month absolutely and you know what we believe in is that numbers and feedback is what drives everything. So, um, you know, if you're looking for something, share that feedback with the team. And that is our motivation to actually go ahead and build it because we don't want to assume things. We want to genuinely solve genuine problems, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, everything that we're talking about during these webinars, 100% noted. And um, yeah, keep pushing for it. So, go on Twitter rants, send us emails, talk on the chat bot, and you know, that's what we're, we're going to look for. You bet, you bet. And a couple quick disclosures. I think in the interest of building in public, right, I think for people out there who are, just, who are still listening to us, two quick internal facts. Sana wasn't kidding when she said 100% noted. We actually have a page and we use Confluence for documentation. Uh, we actually have a page. We have documented this, let's say, let's call this a problem statement or a challenge that we need to solve is the multi-input specifically in bubble, right? The, the API in and itself, if you're using, let's say, another tool or another normal uh, you know, coding language, you can still use the API, have the multiple input there, get the output in the format, you know, wrangle it the way you want. But we understand that this is specifically for bubble that we need to be able to solve. So this 100% is on the list of things that we will be addressing and hopefully trying to prioritize this as far as possible, right? So that's disclosure one. Um, the second thing is we ourselves experienced this before John and Sadna, they were, they were working very closely on building the app and this is more of an anecdotal story. Uh, we experienced the same issue ourselves. I think John had a pretty big idea in terms of how we could make this all happen with dynamic range input. Um, and while we're working our way through it, we realized, yeah, okay, that's not going to happen anytime soon, at least not right now. And so we defaulted back to manually entering that data points, right? So we experienced these issues our, ourselves. So it's not an imaginary issue anymore, right? Um, and, and that's essentially what would, I think, motivate us as well to try and get those things fixed ASAP. So we hear you, we hear you people, for sure. Agreed. Yeah, um, Ben. Yeah. Uh... Ben, thanks. Yeah, I think, and Ben is, I think we've uh, kind of spoken to the points that Ben was experiencing. It, yeah, they're, they're, again, they're known, they're working on it. Um, and, yeah. you know, I appreciate the, uh, the feedback. It does uh, definitely, we've had the same, the same experience as well. Right. So it, it definitely, yeah. it, it's actually, yeah. it's actually helpful to see that everyone is asking for the same thing because it kind of gives you a direction to go in, right? Like that's probably the most, yeah. the yeah. hardest thing when developing anything. It's like, well, what features do I focus on first, right? And this this type of feedback gives sure. you the, the the direction. For sure. Well, I know we're nearing the end of our time and session. So, and of course, I have like a ton more other questions. But I think what I'm going to stop at is the last one that I have. And so, feel free in case you have more, or if you have more comments from other people on our chat. Uh, what's the pulse? behind you? What does it signify, John? Is it is it a calling statement or is that a theme, a logo of sorts? Uh, are you a superhero? Uh, that, I, that I only anticipate that maybe you're saving, you know, something uh, when you're not working. So what, what's that Paul's represent there behind you? Oh, the, the like, I wasn't sure what you were talking about. Uh, yeah, it, it's, yeah. Just, I, it's just a cool, I like the blue light in the background. That's all. It just makes the, ah, the stream look cooler. It's the neon light. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I cool like the visual factor. that it gives. The cool factor counts. The cool factor I, counts. I, it, 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 yeah, I, sh yeah, I should come perfect. up with a better story for it, though, right? <laughs> the hard I think that's okay. The honest, the honest dude, like that's that's what you're here for, right? Like the fireside chat. Uh, the idea behind this is, of course, not everything is you know rainbows and sunshine. We also have a bunch of different challenges. We definitely want to address them. Be transparent about it. Not shy away from some of the challenges we know we have in the platform. Um, with that in mind, let me just quickly share my screen again and get you folks, um, unless we have more questions coming in, 
I'm going to get you folks um, to the next best thing. So for people who have already attended our last webinar, this should be a familiar take. But for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, uh, you don't have to go out empty-handed. So this is a quick show-and-tell activity that we have prepared. Uh, now that you know what Sparklight can do, and if you're a big fan of Bubble or, let's say, some other platform, feel free to try it out. You know, build something that it doesn't matter who uses it. It doesn't matter if it makes sense. Build something. I mean, that's the whole idea. Experiment with new use cases. Uh, uh, and, you know, feel free to share it with us or in case you're not on any of the socials but still, you know, want to be able to share, uh, send us an email. I am sure everybody has email. Send us an email at hello at sparkfly.io and we'll make sure to send some swags your way. Get some merch out of this. And I think for those who don't really care, you do get an all-access pass to our teams as well. Like, we are an early-stage team. Um, as you can imagine, so it's... Someone's joining in from Hong Kong and it's past midnight and she is in the office. That's how dedicated Respect. our folks are. <laughs> right. Um, and we're always here to help out and essentially try and understand, okay, how else can we make things better and improve and, of course, build new features. Um, so this is a small show and tell activity for those out there. Build something, share it with us, get some work. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. All right. right. And any last uh, last thoughts here? I think uh, the chat the chat is slowed down. I don't have any questions coming in. Uh, nothing else from my end. I don't think anything. Any last minute well, things? Uh... I'm guessing this goes to say how good the demo Sadna and John, the both of you have given. Right? I think we clarified. We we basically you know uh, made sure people sort of get it right from the get go. So that's yeah. Kudos to to you folks uh, to making that happen. And it, people listening in, it's not just questions. And probably I should add a slide for it. If you have more compliments, send it our way. Like that's that's what will you know uh, wake Sadna up tomorrow, I suppose. Wake us up tomorrow and make sure we work uh, even harder yeah. to get those brownie points uh, from you. So yeah, absolutely. And, um, once again, John, thank you so much for having us. We hope we can keep doing this. And we hope you can keep building incredible apps and tools and platforms on Bubble. Yep, right. we'll do. Looking forward to seeing uh, what uh, your team comes up with and the next iterations of Sparklight. Again, thank you for jumping on. Um, check us out tomorrow. I'm going to be taking a look at the WellGot plugin for doing multilingual uh, translations in Bubble. Uh, tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Subscribe. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you all. Absolutely. All right. See you tomorrow, everybody. Yeah, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.